My name is Jason Vong, and for those of you who've been following me for a while now, know my affinity for these Zeiss bodice lenses to the point where you can say I have a pretty unhealthy obsession. But that's not today's video. Today's video, we're actually gonna be examining how well the video autofocus performs when you pair up these sexy lenses with the brand new Sony a7S III. Wow, Zeiss is a sponsor on this channel. They did not ask me to make this specific video. I've been a bodice user for years now, even before becoming a partner with them. So this is honestly just a personal curiosity, but I do want to share the results with my fellow T bodice users, as well as anyone who's curious about using these lenses for video work. So what we're going to be taking a look at here today is the speed, the accuracy, and the smoothness of the autofocus. Over the last year, there's been a lot of advancement on the real-time tracking autofocus on the Sony Alpha cameras, especially on the S3. So let's see what it can do for us. We're actually going to start off with speed and accuracy first because these two kind of go hand in hand. The autofocus can be lightning fast, but if it can't acquire focus accurately, then it really doesn't matter. But thankfully, that has not been the case here. As you probably saw from the few footage that I've shown already. It's snappy, it's fast, and it locks on quick. This also has to do with the new detailed autofocus control introduced to the Sony a7S III, which defines a clear rate at which the camera reacts to shifting focus and how quickly it needs to do it. Instead of the vague, slow, medium, and fast where you would find in the other Sony models, you can actually select numbers on the a7S III. Speed goes up to 7, which controls how quickly the camera and lens acquires focus, 7 being the fastest and 1 being the the slowest, and one is really slow by the way. And sensitivity goes up to five, which controls how quickly it needs to react to change subjects to focus on. One being really stubborn to stick focus on the initial target, and five being ADD where it changes its mind constantly. Here's a basic face and eye autofocus test with the 18mm and the 25mm both shot wide open. As I'm moving into frame, the camera and lens react immediately to focus on my eye. How the real-time AI autofocus work on the Sony cameras is that it prioritizes eye first, then face, and then whatever is the most distinct and closest to the lens. As I'm rotating into frame with my back facing the camera first, it already achieved focus because that's what's most apparent in the frame. And then as my face and eye appear in front of the lens, it then changes to lock onto them. So it goes without saying, these two lenses here are gonna be great for vlogging as it will do a good job keeping your big face in the frame in focus. And when you need to flip the camera around to show the environment, it will quickly focus to that. So my recommended vlog settings would be the default settings, speed at five, sensitivity at five. But if you're doing talking head style interviews, I would probably lower the sensitivity down just a bit, maybe like a three or four or something. Okay, so that was a little too easy. Nothing too intricate involved since it was mainly a static shot. So let's up the ante a little. Let's just say we're tracking a moving subject that not only comes into frame, but also towards and away from the camera. As wedding shooters ourselves, we've gone through the pain to keep the bride in focus as she manually walks as she manually, as we manually keep her in focus as she walks down the aisle. But over the last year, we've really been reliant on the Sony's face autofocus to keep them in focus as they approach the altar. But what if the bride suddenly decides to walk backwards or hop onto a Segway and just kind of go up and down the aisle, do a few loop-de-loop -loop before coming back to the groom and saying, I do. Are you sure? I think so. Welp, the face and eye autofocus got you covered. Here's my filmmaking buddy Tam, who's hotter than any brides I know. Are you sure? And watch as we track him with both the 85mm at f1.8 and the 135mm at f2.8. 
it is keeping him in solid focus the whole time. In this test, we enable touch tracking autofocus, which is like autofocus glue. It will stick on the subject that you tap on. So even when he does a 360 or have his back to us, it will keep him in focus. Remember when we set the camera, we'll prioritize the eye and face first. So as he presents his front to us, the camera will lock onto his eye and face. And if the camera can't find it, it will lock onto his body. Now, while this whole video autofocus voodoo sounds like magic, I do need to share some of the pitfalls that we face during this test. With the 85 millimeter and the 135 millimeter, Tam is a clearly defined human subject. The lenses melt the background away, so it's easy for the camera to find the human shape. But when we swap to the 40 millimeter, where it's much wider compared to the two telephotos, suddenly what he was wearing sort of blended into the background. This fool here dressed like the beach. Talk about terrible fashion choices. As we were tracking him on the 40 millimeter, there were times where the autofocus glue would sort of lose it and sticks to the basketball pole instead, or even the wall in the back. So while the tracking autofocus works great, again, the subject it's tracking needs to be distinct enough for it to work well. So it's probably a good idea to tell your talents to not dress like the beach. Uh, is he struggling? Yeah, because once, once he went past the pole, it thought it, 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 it's locked onto that instead. Mm. I wonder if I wear black or a different color, would it yeah. be better? You match the beach right now, that's why. <laughs> Now, my friend Tam isn't in this video just for his suave looks and terrible beach fashion, but he's a way better gimbal operator than I am. Check this shot out. Shot on the 135 f2.8 on a gimbal, combining everything that we've learned so far. We're doing orbitals, we're doing some intricate complex camera movement, and my god, I'm in solid focus. And as the camera's tilting down, it's keeping my leg in focus. No hunting, no breathing, no pulsing. Now, granted, we could have tried this shot again to try to perfect it, but we were really against time. The sun was setting, but Oh my God, holy cow, that's amazing. The 135 with its buttery look and the fact that it was light enough to balance on a gimbal to get these incredible shots on the beach. Damn. So for these gimbal shots, we did have active stabilization turn on and the lens itself has image stabilization as well. But we are definitely curious about the gyro capabilities of the camera, where we might have been able to get smoother results with the Catalyst app. Brandon Lee, Sony filmmaking god, bless his heart, made a really good video talking about this phenomenon. There is a new generation of stabilization, not in the gimbal, but in the camera that can make your gimbal shots look pretty much perfect. And that's the gyro stabilization of the Sony a7S III. I will link his video for you to check out. Essentially, you turn off any sort of stabilization in camera, but the camera itself will still record the gyro data within the footage file. So when you port it into the Catalyst software, it can actually give you stabilized results far better than what any editing software can with its built-in warp stabilization. Okay, too much face, too much eyes. Let's go ahead and do some object tracking. So we already know the camera does a great job keeping things in focus even without eyes and face. So there's really not much for me to add here, but I do wanna talk about this one shot where we struggle just a little bit. This is a shot of me using the camera and shooting out into the beach. And as Tam was pulling out, pulling back, I mean, it wouldn't keep the camera in focus. It's a fairly complicated shot if you think about it. To be able to move away from the object while simultaneously keeping it in focus. But what we found out was that prior to this shot, we set the autofocus speed to slow for one specific shot where the camera would rack focus to me as I walk into frame which worked great by the way. But we forgot to change the speed for this particular shot. Once we upped the speed rate to seven, as Tam was pulling out, don't say it. As he was pulling back, it kept the camera in focus. And we even did one where we tracked towards the camera. And while it did a great job, it suddenly focused on my thumb instead. So the key thing here is that while the autofocus is spectacular, you really gotta know how to use it and understand some of the potential pitfalls that you might come across. It will probably take some messing around, especially with the settings while you're on the spot shooting. So just be prepared for that. And finally, we gotta be talking about smoothness. 
Now, most film makers would do rack focus manually because they have lenses with really fine focus control to do this super easily, especially with the cinema lenses. The biggest critique with most mirrorless lenses is that they use fly-by-wire focusing, which makes it extremely difficult to do any sort of manual rack focusing. It's just the way that these lenses are designed to be able to work in conjunction with the camera's autofocus, while at the same time keeping them lighter and using a different focusing technology. The Zeiss bodice lenses are unfortunately fly-by-wire focusing, so to be able to do rack focus manually with your hands with these lenses... But with the advent of programmed rack autofocusing, it really makes achieving shots like this a lot easier, even with fly-by-wire lenses. Here's a shot of my two morning coffees with the 85mm f1.8 at around 2 or 3 in the speed settings, and it gave me some really good, smooth results. And yes, our lattes were smooth too. Anyways, yes, 2 or 3 in the speed settings gave me some really smooth results. 1 was honestly too slow, and 5 was a little too snappy for shots like this, of course. Now, a couple of things I do want to note here. 1. I am using touch focus, so because I'm tapping on the screen, there could be some potential shake in the footage, so when you do do this, just be gentle. The other thing, the touch function still works when you have an external monitor connected. Other and older Sony models, you would actually lose touch capabilities on the LCD screen once you plug in an external monitor. Which was a darn shame if you wanted to do any sort of touch focusing when you have an external monitor plug in. But not the A7S III. The filmmaking video king of a camera, baby, Sony A7S III. And yes, the face and eye autofocus will work in 4K with the external monitor plugged in. So, Sony A7S III and Zeiss bodice lenses. Amazing. Despite these lenses being out for years now, the fact that it can work so well with the brand new Sony a7S III proves that they're ready for any one of my future video projects, which you'll see more of on this channel. So subscribe, stay tuned, stay safe, and don't forget, the OLED display on these bodice lenses are dope as fuck! <laughs>